Jeffrey Nicholson with the Williamson County Public Library. Last Friday, January 29th, we held a program, a, a vaccination Q&A with the Williamson County Public Information Officer and the Director of the Williamson County Emergency Management Agency. Unfortunately, I did not start the recording on time. <laughs> so this video will start after the Public Information Officer, Hannah Bean, has started speaking. So I'm going to show you next the website for WilliamsonReady.org at which she began talking that shows the top with the information number and the phases that we are in. And then you'll hear her pick up with the video as she is explaining different parts of that web page just scrolled a little further down. I hope you enjoy it and find it as informative as we all did. Thank you for watching. Every detail of this, um, but you'll be able to read this on the site. But the most important thing for you to know is you're gonna try to find this link, uh, the Williamson County wait list. When you click that, it'll take you to this page. Um, it's through Sign Up Genius. And as you'll see, there's some important information here at the top that you're gonna wanna read from the TN Department of Health regarding uh, your appointment time, uh, and how to go about registering. And then you'll scroll down here to the bottom and you're gonna see the sign up button. When you click this button, um, you're gonna get another little uh, intro page here and you're just gonna click that again. So you're gonna click submit and sign up. And if you saw something on that previous page, it looked like it was on a calendar and it kind of looks like that might be your appointment time, but it's not. Uh, when you're, that's just the date that you're registering for the wait list. That date doesn't mean anything past this point. Um, and again, you'll see that same date listed here, the 29th, that's today. This is just telling the state that this is when you've registered on the wait list. This is not an appointment time. So just keep that in mind when you're registering um, or you're registering for someone else, or, or maybe you hear that someone thinks that um, when they've registered that they should show up uh, for their vaccination at the agricultural center. This is just a date that you're signing up for the wait list. It doesn't mean anything past this point. So again, you're just gonna fill out all your contact information and email is really important. If you don't have that, uh, the phone number is equally as important. And that's because when you receive your notification, you're gonna have a short amount of time to respond um, to that notification from the state regarding your appointment time. Um, and you're gonna want to make sure that you're checking your email or your texts and phone calls every single day. Uh, maybe twice a day. Just double check that you haven't received anything regarding an appointment. And then you're going to categorize yourself in whatever you are eligible for. So currently, as we said before, uh, currently the only eligible individuals in Williamson County are those 75 and older, phase 1A1 or phase 1A2. Um, if you're not in these categories, we'll show you what you're to do a little later. And again, this will change as we move through phases. More categories will be added to this. Uh, but for now, these are the individuals that are eligible. And then at the bottom here, you're going to put your county of work or residence, and then you're going to sign up. And you're going to be taken to a closing screen. Um, after that point, you'll receive a confirmation email in your inbox. Um, and when you get that confirmation email, um, again, it's just going to give you a little bit more information and the state's going to say uh, you're currently on the wait list and you'll be notified again when there's appointment availability and you'll be able to sign up. So um, this process before you receive an appointment could take several weeks and that's important to know, um, you know, uh, it, it, depending upon vaccine availability uh, at the end of the day. So again, uh, once you've signed up on the wait list and you've got that confirmation email, you're good to go. Uh, you're just going to wait for a notification from the state when you're able to register for a vaccine. And again, this process can take some time. We have some people that call into the public information line saying, you know, I have um, been on the wait list for two weeks and I haven't heard anything. Am I still on the list? Yes, you're still on the list if you haven't received a notification yet. And they're going to be working down that list based off of eligibility. So again, that's really important. And I'm just going to take you guys back to our health department vaccine administration page. So again, um, you are to find this information under this phase category. So if you are a phase 1A1, phase 1A2, or 75 and up individual, this is the information you need to know. 
and I would recommend reading every bit of this section. And that's because it can answer a lot of questions that you might have after signing up for the wait list. So if you're not one of these individuals yet and you wanna know how you can get your vaccine or when you can get the vaccine, um, we have set up an alert system. Uh, so you are going to go to this all other phases portion of the website um, and you're gonna click this SurveyMonkey link. So I will open that up as well. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give it a little time to hopefully hop over to this screen. Um, so this availability alert system, all you're doing is registering yourself under your eligible phase and providing your contact information. And this allows us to alert you when we've moved to your phase. So you won't really hear from us unless we've moved to your phase. Of course, we're gonna be sending uh, confirmation notifications out so that you know you're on the alert system, but past that you will not hear from this uh, system until you're currently eligible. Um, so it will hopefully help. Um, and whenever you get that notification, it'll link you directly to where you're to sign up. Um, so that might be the wait list. If the process has changed at all, it'll just directly link you to where you're supposed to go rather than having to dig for information. Um, and that will come via text, a phone call, and an email if you've provided all three. If you've only provided two of those options, it'll only go to two of those uh, different services. So it might be a text and an email for you. Um, but again, this is just a reiteration that this is not a registration for the vaccine and it doesn't guarantee a vaccine appointment. Um, and if you're in the previous phases or the phases that are currently eligible, you don't need to sign up for this. Uh, you are already eligible and you should go to the sign up genius to go on the wait list. So again, you'll just provide your first name, your last name, uh, your contact information here, and then you'll determine what phase you're eligible for. So uh, let's just say you don't feel that you can categorize as any of the phase 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, or phase three. You're just gonna click none of the above. And then you might be an age-based category. You can be both. Um, let's just say you're a 2B individual and you're 45 and up. You will receive a notification whichever phase comes first for you. So if you are categorized in both, um, and let's just say 2B is eligible before 45 and up, you'll get a notification for 2B. Um, so again, this can be really helpful for us in determining um, what members of our community are currently eligible or not. So I would highly recommend if you are not uh, currently eligible, going ahead and signing up for this alert system. It makes it really easy. You don't have to scroll through social media to find this information uh, when you are el eligible and you'll just receive that text, email, or phone call when, when your phase is ready. So again, I'm hopping back over to our williamsonready.org website. So we will have this graphic here that will always display what phases we're currently in. Uh, so if you ever wanna check in on that, again, you just kind of scroll past uh, this phase information uh, and you can see what phase we're currently in. We also have some frequently asked questions here on our website. Our call center, again, is always available to answer these, but let's just say you'd prefer to just uh, scroll and read, you can do that here on our website. Um, and you can read through all of these different frequently asked questions that we do receive. And then we also have a list of resources here that you can navigate through. If you're interested in, um, you know, state reports about how many vaccines they've distributed across the state, or you want to learn more about your phase, uh, you want to learn more about um, where other vaccine locations are. You can go here down to the bottom and, and find those resources. Uh, but again, for the purposes of today, we just wanna make sure and reiterate that everyone knows when you come to this page, um, you can fall under two categories currently, those that are currently eligible or those that are not. And there are two things, uh, there's something for everyone to do. So again, uh, make sure to scroll through that um, and if you have family members that need assistance, uh, you can register them now uh, since you kind of understand how these systems work or they can call the public information line. And I'll reiterate that again here at the top of the page. That's 615-595-4880 and that's available Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. Um, and uh, again, we have that staffed and ready for everybody. So 
I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and I um, will hand the rest of the presentation kind of over to Todd as he'll be able to clarify some things, um, maybe add additional context. And then if there's questions regarding what I have um, already discussed, uh, make sure to hold on to those and we'll be answering them at the end of this. Thanks, Hannah. <clears throat> I appreciate the opportunity to address you all today and certainly to answer any questions that you may have. As Hannah has explained the process for how to find information and sign up, I just want to reiterate a couple of important facts. A number of people who have signed up have incorrectly entered their email address or their phone number inadvertently. So we encourage you as you're typing that information in to please verify the accuracy of that information before you submit that record because it is the only means of notification that we have for you and we certainly want to be able to reach you uh, when it's time for you to receive the vaccine <laughs> so that you can make an appointment. Uh, we do have a, a significant number of people currently on the wait list and as vaccine becomes available to us we're immediately scheduling those individuals into available slots. Uh, so the vaccine uh, has increased uh, in its frequency of coming to Williamson County and so we expect that people will be moved off of that wait list fairly quickly, although I'm not able to give you an exact estimation of how long that will take. But as Hannah says, it may take a few days or even two to three weeks for some of you to receive the vaccine, depending on where you are on the wait list. <clears throat> um, when, you, when you do make an appointment, for the vaccine. Uh, as Hannah mentioned, all of our vaccines are being administered at the Williamson County Ag Center. Hopefully many of you have had an opportunity to visit this facility in the past for other reasons. Um, but when you arrive on site, uh, it should be fairly clear to you of how to navigate the site. Uh, we enter at the very first entrance to the Ag Center. We do have staff on hand as well as message signs and cones and barriers that help guide you through the parking lot to where you will drive into the Ag Center, remain in your vehicles, uh, you will fill out some information that is necessary and sign a consent form, and then you will pull forward to where a nurse will actually administer the vaccine for you. Uh, after you receive the vaccine, you will exit uh, the Ag Center and you will pull to the front parking lot where you'll be asked to wait for 15 minutes to make sure there's no adverse reactions uh, to the vaccine itself. There are staff who are located outside in that parking lot, both medical staff uh, to help you if you need assistance for any reason, as well as there's other staff there to help you sign up for your second dose appointment. So after you receive your shot, you will, you will use your phone to scan a QR code uh, that will take you to the appointment scheduling, again, where you can schedule your second dose appointment. If you do not have a mobile phone or do not have the capability to scan the QR code, there will be staff on site that can help you sign up for your second dose appointment and they will do that on your behalf. As Hannah has mentioned, the call center is available. So if you have no access to the internet or you find problems navigating any of the sign up sites that we've uh, pointed out to you today, or you know of individuals that are having trouble navigating those sites, the call center is here to help you. Please take advantage of those, uh, those individuals to help you schedule your appointment and certainly to answer any questions that you have uh, regarding the vaccine. Uh, if you're interested in understanding whether or not you should take the vaccine, we encourage you to do your own research and sp specifically to reach out to your physician uh, to ensure whether or not you should receive the vaccine um, and if there's a, a time interval that you should consider about when you receive the vaccine. I'll close my comments with, with saying that as more vaccine becomes available to Tennessee, other providers will certainly be approved to be able to administer the vaccine. Um, the, the state Tennessee Department of Health will control that. 
Um, but that, those availabilities will become available. Uh, we are aware that Williamson Medical Center is doing some vaccine administration for healthcare workers right now, uh, but the eligibility for some people to receive uh, the vaccine at that location may be available in the near future. Um, there are other providers and, and many private providers that will be brought on board. Uh, we expect that some Walmart pharmacies, not necessarily in Williamson County, but some Walmart ph pharmacies across the state, especially in rural communities, may be brought on board to receive, uh, to administer vaccine. Uh, and this information will always be available on our website at, at the location that Hannah talked to you, WilliamsonReady.org. Uh, anytime new providers are being brought on or new opportunities are afforded, we certainly will make that known uh, through our website. Um, I'm happy, uh, Hannah and I both, to answer any questions that you have uh, regarding the vaccine process. Uh, we will not be able to answer any uh, specific questions about the vaccine and health-related questions. Uh, those, again, would be need to be directed to, uh, to your local physician or to uh, the health department uh, or to the call center for help in those areas. If we have questions, should we put them in the chat or just out loud? I think Jeffy is trying to get connected again and uh, she'll explain the process. While she navigates her, her computer and the technological issues, I'm happy for uh, any of you just to uh, make your questions known aloud. You're welcome to put them in the chat. Jeffy is monitoring the chat. However, if she's having technical issues, we may not get that information. So feel free to ask questions. Uh, can you hear me now, Todd? Yes, ma'am, I can. Okay, yes. If you want to put your questions in the chat while someone else is talking, I'll be happy to um, catch uh, Hannah and Todd and let them know that there's a question. Um, and I'm happy to get the ball rolling with my question is, are all the counties in Tennessee in the same phase? Or is it possible that Davidson is in one phase, Rutherford in another, and Williamson County in a different one? It's a good question, Jeffy, and yes, uh, not every county will be in the same phase, and that's for a number of reasons. Um, the Tennessee Department of Health only regulates uh, certain uh, health departments, uh, Williamson County being one of those. Uh, there are eight metropolitan health departments like Davidson County that run their own health departments and that the state does not control. So they may move through phases at a different rate for that reason. Uh, the other reason is because different counties receive different amounts of vaccine based on their population base. And so, uh, for instance, Williamson County may have more healthcare workers and public safety uh, employees than another county. So it may take us longer to move through those populations than it might another county. So each county can have different phases, uh, but they will be, for the most part, closely aligned with one another. Uh, and, and as we're able to, we will move uh, to different levels of, of phasing. Um, I also seen a question in the chat about how many people are currently on the wait list. Um, presently, there are over 3,000 people uh, in Williamson County's wait list. Um, unfortunately, that number is not a total accurate number because some of those individuals have since been able to get the vaccine somewhere else and have not taken their name off the wait list. Um, or some of those individuals may have signed up more than one time on the wait list. Uh, and there could be other reasons. Uh, but at least currently, there are 3,000, over 3,000 individuals on our wait list for the 1A1, 1A2, and 75 and older category. And I, 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 
Sorry, I'm going to um, make a quick note really quick, just for everyone's awareness. Um, one thing I didn't mention and Paul didn't mention, um, if you've received your notification and uh, you didn't respond to it, didn't set up an appointment, and you see it later, let's just say three, four days later, and it's expired at that point, um, your notification, you can't get the vaccine just because um, maybe they were looking for people that were able to get it um, over a two to three day window. If that's the case and you've missed that appointment opportunity, then you're gonna have to put yourself back on the wait list. So it's really important that if you've missed that notification or you aren't able to make any of the appointment times that you're given, uh, that you sign back up on the wait list. Um, so maybe the dates that, that, that they offer you don't fit with your schedule. It's okay, just put yourself back on the wait list. Go back to that sign up genius and put your name back on and they'll add you back to the list. So I see a question on the wait list. What is the current average wait time for those receiving the vaccine today? Uh, for those who have appointments today, uh, there should be virtually no wait time. Um, the, the reason that we experience wait times is because people show up uh, early for their appointment instead of waiting for their appointment time. And obviously we have no control over people showing up early for the process. Uh, but our the last two days specifically, uh, there's been less than five minutes, I think, on average for people who, who have appointments to get their vaccine. That will obviously fluctuate uh, as time goes on, as more and more people become eligible and more and more vaccine becomes available. Uh, but our process has been refined very well in order to ensure the least amount of wait time possible. Uh, there's a question, Metro has a standby list for vaccines administered to ensure no vaccines are wasted. Is Williamson County doing something similar? And if so, please elaborate. <clears throat> Uh, again, Williamson County is, is not interested in wasting any vaccine, and we are using the wait list that's already been established uh, to notify individuals at the end of the day when we have extra doses of vaccine. The appointment schedule helps us to ensure that we don't waste any vaccine. Uh, so we, we do not have a standby list because the, that would circumvent the wait list process. And we want to be assured that we try to get to the wait list as quickly as possible. Uh, and so I hope that answers the question. I'm happy to, to uh, elaborate more if I was not clear on that. And we had another question about what vaccine or, or which vaccine is being distributed at the Ag Center. So presently we are, uh, we are receiving both Moderna and Pfizer vaccine, which are the only two vaccines currently approved with an emergency authorization use. Uh, as more vaccine becomes approved, uh, we anticipate that we may be receiving more of different kinds of vaccine, but presently it is Moderna and Pfizer. So the question is, so are we currently using every vaccine each day with this process? Uh, for every appointment that we have scheduled, we are administering every dose of vaccine that we have. And if, uh, if we have some no-shows, people who, who for whatever reason don't show up for their vaccine, we are using the wait list to ensure that we administer that vaccine and, and no vaccine is wasted. Another good question, why is Williamson County only given vaccines 15 hours a week? Our vaccination hours are determined by the state and the state has told us that we will vaccinate on Monday, Wednesday and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Tuesdays and Thursdays from um, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and we will also now be vaccinating beginning Saturdays uh, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. These hours are state set by the Department of Health, and so that's what we must operate under since we're a, a state-run health department. Um, if they allow us to vaccinate more hours and there is vaccine available, we certainly will move into those new hours uh, immediately upon receiving approval.
we are uh, the question is can you repeat the hours again the vaccination hours right now are monday wednesday and friday from 10 a.m to 4 p.m tuesdays and thursdays from 12 p.m to 4 p.m and saturdays 9 a.m to 12 p.m again by appointment only So I think I understand the question. The question reads, if receiving the vaccine today and on the wait list, what is the current average wait time, time from waiting list to appointment before getting an appointment currently? And again, that's going to vary based on the vaccine that we have available. Um, immediately when we receive a vaccine, we begin opening up appointments for that available vaccine. And, and that can vary. Uh, again, uh, to re reiterate, there's uh, close to 3,000 plus people on the wait list currently, but many of those, or not many of those, some of those may have already received the vaccine and have not told us so that they can be removed from the wait list. Uh, or for other reasons. And as we uh, send notices to those individuals and they let us know at that point that they've already received the vaccine or they no longer wish to receive the vaccine, uh, they will be removed from the wait list and we will extend an invitation to others on the wait list to be able to get uh, the vaccine. So while I can't give you a time based on where an individual may be on the wait list, I can say that it may take uh, one day, depending on if they're uh, near the front of the list, or it could take uh, a couple of weeks or more for those who may be at the at the last appointment slot on the on the wait list. The question is: Are all hours at the ag center? Yes, all vaccinations that are being administered by the local health department are being done at the Williamson County Ag Center, and that address is 4215 Long Lane in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, that's exit. 69 uh, on I-65. The question is, is a two to three week wait common for age-based recipients? Again, it does depend on where an individual is on the wait list, but it is not uncommon for someone to have to wait two to three weeks, especially since the availability of vaccine has been very low. We are starting to see an increase in the amount of vaccine that we are receiving locally, which hopefully will speed up the process and, and eliminate long wait times for the vaccine. The question is, is Williamson or the Tennessee Health Department holding back vaccine for second notice, doses or are they administering all vaccine rece uh, received? Uh, the answer to that question is uh, we, we are not necessarily holding back vaccine if we're assured that we're going to get enough vaccine to do second dose appointments. Uh, but this is a precarious balance that must be managed in order to ensure that people who receive the first dose are able to receive the second dose of vaccine. Uh, so presently in Williamson County, we have not had to hold back any vaccine for second dose appointments because we, we are assured at this point that we're going to continue to receive enough to administer those second dose vaccines. Should there be some disruption in the supply chain, uh, we may have to uh, change our course of action based on the state's recommendation. Uh, but at this point, we are not having to do so. And there's a question straight to the organizers. So it is a lady 66 years old and pre-signed up through Survey Champ. I see sign-ups through mm -hmm. Sign Up Genius too. Do I need to sign up there too? Could you could you repeat that again? Um, she signed up through Survey Champ, and she sees sign-ups through Sign Up Genius too. Does she also need to sign up there? So which which okay. uh, we're using Survey Genius, right? Um, so um, uh, I can I can show the difference here if you're okay with me sharing my screen again really quick um, just to clarify. Um, so it sounds like she's saying that she has signed up for our uh, availability alert system. At the top, you see Survey Monkey. 
Um, that's how we collect information. Um, so this is for people who are not currently eligible. So if she's eligible, she needs to go to the sign up genius. It's, it's orange. Now, again, these systems can change. So it's just really important that um, people understand that um, they're looking for wait list if they're currently eligible. Those are some keywords they can be looking for. Let's just say this platform changes. If that's the case, um, you're just always looking for the Williamson County COVID wait list. Those are people that are currently eligible. If you're not eligible, this is run by Williamson County. So um, we are just collecting information so that uh, people can get alerted of when they are eligible. So these two things are different. Um, if you're only on SurveyMonkey and you're currently eligible, you're going to need to go to our website um, and sign up here. And again, I'll take you to the top so you can see what it looks like. I'll slow it down. Hopefully it's not lagging for people. Um, but again, you're just going to want to go to WilliamsonReady.org and you're going to scroll and you're going to see phase 1A1, phase 1A2, and 75 and up. And this is the only link that you should be using, the Sign Up Genius link. And again, these platforms can change. So just make sure that um, you're looking at the information for your phase. Um, if you're not, that's when you're going to go to SurveyMonkey. So, Jeffy, I think your, your comments were that the individual was age 65. And so if they're not a health care worker or a public safety individual, uh, then they they have done the correct thing by signing up on the Survey Monkey. And when 65 and older become eligible, our agency will notify all of those on the Survey Monkey who have indicated they're 65 or older of the process that they need to go through to sign up. We do expect that while Sign Up Genius is the current platform that the state is using to sign up, we have been told that they're moving to a Microsoft platform in the in sometime in the middle of February. So we do know the sign up process will change in the future. Uh, and, and certainly that will be available on our website when that happens. And it will also be sent out when we notify individuals, as Hannah had mentioned, that is now that they are now eligible to get the vaccine of what that current process is. So looking at the chat questions, the question is, are you vaccinating folks from other counties? <clears throat> All, uh, all health departments across the state are required to vaccinate any individual that shows up uh, with an uh, approved appointment time. So yes, we are vaccinating uh, individuals in Williamson County, whether or not they are a resident of Williamson County. Uh, the state says we are all Tennesseans and that we should make uh, the vaccine available to all Tennesseans, no matter which county uh, an individual may live in. Um, can we also clarify um, where you get your first dose, you must get your second dose. So if we do have individuals um, getting their vaccine and they live in Williamson County, but let's just say they go over to Rutherford County to get their first vaccine, they have to get their second dose in Rutherford County. Uh, the same goes for us. If someone gets their first dose here, they have to get their second dose here. And it it's not just the county that you received the vaccine, but it's also the location in which you received the vaccine. So if Williamson Medical Center is where you receive your first dose, Williamson Medical Center is where you would receive your second dose. And the reason for that is because the state allocates second dose vaccines to the same location where the individual received their first dose. And so if you didn't get your first dose at Williamson County, we will not be receiving a vaccine to administer to you for your second dose. That will have to come from where you received your first dose. <clears throat> The question asks us to repeat which vaccines we are administering at the Ag Center. Presently, we are administering both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine based on availability of the vaccine. Is it possible to reschedule an appointment if you have an issue? Yes, it is possible to reschedule an appointment um, and that, that can be done through the Sign Up Genius process. Or if you're having trouble navigating that process, you can call the, the Help Center to help you reschedule an appointment. And there's another question in the chat room about when we get to phase 1C. Do you see that? 
Yeah, so the question is, when we get to phase 1C, where the plan lists several medical diagnoses to qualify, what proof of that diagnose will be required? Um, that is a health-related question that I or Hannah, I'm not able to answer. Uh, so we would encourage you to call the Help Center uh, for information or uh, to check with your local provider on that information. Uh, we do expect uh, that once 1C becomes available, that the state will provide us as well as the public more guidance surrounding that. Uh, and, uh, and as soon as that information is received, we certainly will make it available on our website at williamsonready.org. I have a question. Once you've gotten both vaccinations, um, are there any COVID uh, precautions that you need to continue to take, like the mask wearing and social distancing, or are you in the clear then? So right now, the Tennessee Department of Health guidance says that irregardless of whether you receive the vaccine or not, that for the present time, uh, maintaining social distancing and wearing masks are still uh, advised. Uh, we expect that that guidance will change at some point in the future, but as of right now, that is still the guidance that the Tennessee Department of Health is publishing. The question uh, on the chat is, is 70 plus phase before 1C phase? Uh, yes, the uh, State Department of Health issued a press release, I believe two days ago, uh, that added phase 70 plus uh, to be ahead of, of, of age 65 plus. So they added that phase in and it does currently fall uh, before phase 1C. Even though uh, they have changed the phasing, that is still not an eligible category in Williamson County as we're still trying to navigate through the 1A1, 1A2, and 75 and older population. And when we complete that phase uh, or get near to the completion of that phase, we will announce that we're moving into the 70 plus phase and open up opportunities for people to schedule appointments for the vaccine. If you would like to see the phases, you can go to the Tennessee Department of Health website, which is tn.gov forward slash health and click on the red banner. Uh, and that will take you to a page that will display uh, all of the different phases in, in the vaccination plan for the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Hannah, would you post that uh, Tennessee Department of Health website? Thank you. Thank you, Jeffy. The question is, how soon do we think 70 plus begins? Uh, I wish I had an estimate for you, but I don't. And again, it, it depends on vaccine availability. And so as a vaccine becomes available, we are scheduling appointments as quickly as we possibly can uh, so that we can move through the wait list and add additional phases uh, to our vaccination process. Um, so if uh, there, well, it looks like there's one more question. Todd, do you want to answer this one? So the question is, if on the wait list already, such as 1A2, is it fair to assume I should receive a vaccine appointment before the county goes to the next phase? Yes, anybody that is currently eligible on the wait list should receive a notification to schedule their appointment before we move into the next phase. Okay, um, and I would just like to reiterate, um, just from our end, again, there's, there's various resources out there for everyone, whether that's visiting our website at williamsonready.org, um, calling the public information line. Um, again, they're equipped to answer these same questions you're giving us, which is a great thing. Um, 
so hopefully we're, we've answered most of your questions today, um, as well as provided the resources that you need. On top of that, we do have social media accounts. So if you um, are on Facebook or Twitter, you can follow us at Williamson County Emergency Management Agency. You just type in our title um, and we have a Facebook and a Twitter that we also update. So if you prefer to get information that way, uh, we will always recommend first, um, you know, obviously going to our website. Um, again, that will have the most up-to-date information. Um, and for those that aren't registered on our text opt-in system, we do send press releases uh, straight to your phone if you would like to opt into those. So I'm going to, in the chat box here, put how to register for that. But um, you just text the keyword WC COVID to 888-777. Um, and when you do that, again, you'll opt into text messages from us and we'll be able to send you things like press releases or any other updates uh, that we might have. So there's a question in the chat, what counties are in 70 plus? Um, if you look up a couple of chat messages before that, Hannah posted a link uh, that is, is the covid19.tn.gov uh, and it ends with vaccine phases. When you go to that link, it will take you to a page and it'll it'll tell you about additional, it'll, it'll provide a link for you of what counties are in what phase. So you can look at all 95 counties in the state of Tennessee and find out what phase they are currently vaccinating. All right, so, oh. Eric is asking if you would repeat the handle. Oh. For the vaccine phase? That is that for the vaccine phases, Jeffy? I think he means Twitter, the Twitter handle. Okay. Um, uh, so if you're trying to follow us on social media, that's Williamson County Emergency Management Agency or WCTNEMA. Um, and I can put that here in the chat box as well. Um, and you can follow us there. Well, I'm sure as we all can imagine, you both are extremely busy people, and I do so appreciate your time in coming in and explaining the process and talking with us. Um, I would just like to say thank you, and uh, if no one else has any further questions, I think we can uh, close the meeting for now, and hopefully we'll be able to get back with you guys again. Thanks for the in invite. In a few weeks after things it. have changed and settled down. <laughs> We appreciate the invite. You all have a great day. You too. Thank you.